Bringing the people behind our food to life. Hi, I'm Michelle Knaus. Welcome to my front yard and welcome to my beautiful artichoke plant. I am a longtime chef, but a pretty new gardener. And I'm really proud of the fact that I planted this little baby less than a year ago as a one foot globe artichoke plant from the farmer's market. And it's early in the season and already I've got six or seven artichoke flowers already growing, um, which is great because I love artichokes. And we're gonna make a really delicious artichoke pesto today. That it, one of the best qualities is that you can put it on so many different things. So let's go inside. So there is meat and flesh on the inside leaves of the artichoke, but it's just a tiny amount. And um, what we really want on the artichoke is the heart. That's where all the flavor is. You don't have to work too hard, at least once you've peeled the artichoke down to that piece. So what we're gonna do now is completely prep the artichoke to where we're left with just the heart. Now in the meantime, you can certainly um, save these leaves and steam them separately as a snack. Be careful as you go that you don't stab yourself inadvertently with one of the spines that are at the tips of these leaves. But all we need to do, and you can do this with a knife. I like to do it with my, my hands. It just, I know I don't go too far into ripping pieces off if I'm doing it all by hand like this. Um, and you just peel away, you can see that the color starts to change. Now that's really the key to knowing where the artichoke is its most tender, is its palest, yellowest parts. Um, you'll start to see some purple because we're getting close to the actual flower head that's buried in here. This whole little piece comes off, which can seem like a waste if you don't do anything with this. So do something with this. But the heart of the matter, is right here. Now there's a choke that we have to take off, which are the actual um, to be flower petals. If we were to let this grow, it would eventually bloom into a gorgeous flower. So what we're gonna do is get these thistly uh, little flower petals out of here because they don't get tender. And I like to use a spoon or at the very best, a grapefruit spoon that has a little bit of that serrated point to it. Um, to sort of scrape these out. So once I've got the flower petals mostly gone, that's when I take my peeler and sort of clean this up a little bit. Now I really enjoy the stem. I think the stem can be very tender as well. So when I break it down to just the artichoke heart, I leave the stem on there and I just peel the outside skin off. So that's what I'll do here. If you try to do this with a knife, you'll probably end up cutting most of the stem off. So I find that the peeler is a little more delicate. Now, if you're gonna serve this, you can take your knife and trim it up a little bit around the ends. I'll just cut this very tip off. And for my purposes, um, this is looking great. Get a little bit of the tougher pieces off. And this is good to go. Now, if you were gonna do a whole bunch of these, I would drop this into some lemon water because it'll immediately start to oxidize and turn brown. So you can just put them head first into the water. Um, but if you're only doing one or two, as soon as they're done, you can pop them directly into your steamer and steam them until they're tender. I'd check them after five minutes and they should be good to go. So for the pesto, um, the artichokes actually add a nice sweetness and a bulk to it in the sense of it not being a really runny pesto. It'll be kind of thick, kind of chunky, almost salsa-like, but with a pesto flavor, which makes it really lovely for putting on bread or putting on fish or using as a condiment. Um, you can also add a little extra wine vinegar and turn it into a salad dressing. So what we need to make this pesto is artichoke hearts. And the artichoke hearts need to be cooked already. If you buy them frozen or canned, they're already cooked. Um, if you're using your fresh artichokes, you want to make sure they're steamed already. Um, fresh herbs are going to be a major component of this. I've got some fresh thyme, some fresh basil, and some fresh parsley. And the parsley is there not just for that sort of fresh green flavor that it imparts, but color. Um, if you just kind of went with, you know, walnuts and cheese and artichoke hearts, you'd end up with sort of a weird 
sort of pale yellow brownish pesto. The parsley is gonna keep it super green and really attractive. So there's a lot of parsley in it. Um, we're also gonna use lemons and lemon zest for the acid kick to it. And our base is the walnuts. Now you always want to toast any nuts that you use in any recipe. And the one exception would be if it's on the top of a cake and not on the inside at all. Um, and it'll toast in the oven as you bake it. Um, if you're gonna put it in a salad, if you're gonna put it in a pesto, if you're gonna do anything with nuts, the first thing you do is you toast them. 350 degrees, about five minutes until you can smell them. And what it does is it brings the natural oils to the outside and gives it a really lovely texture and it increases the flavor. So very important, always toast. Um, and then can't go without the garlic. So I've got a bunch of fresh garlic. Now it's not gonna be cooked at all. So you wanna use some sense of restraint with the garlic um, or it'll be a little too spicy, but it's so good for you. Great for your moon system and a wonderful flavor. So um, last but not least, we've got some Parmesan Reggiano that we're going to add in um, at the very end after we've processed it. Uh, the reason that we're waiting is that up until the point that you add the cheese, you can freeze any extra pesto that you have very easily. Cheese doesn't do as well in the freezer, so it's nice to freeze it without the cheese and then just add the cheese right before you use it. Um, sea salt is what I always use as my salt flavoring and then definitely some freshly cracked black pepper. Um, and then olive oil is going to bind the whole thing together. So once you've got all your ingredients out, all you really have to do is process them. So I've got my handy dandy food processor. I'm gonna put the biggest, bulkiest ingredients in the bottom first so that the blades hit those first. So for me, that's going to be the artichoke hearts and some nuts. Now, you've already processed the garlic. You've already cut the, the garlic, you say. Well, this is true, and that's because if I were to just put maybe one or two cloves of garlic in here that I hadn't cut up already, it might not get very processed in this pulsing action that we're gonna do in the food processor. So to avoid anyone getting stuck with one big chunk of garlic in their particular bite of artichoke pesto, I have chopped this up a little bit already. All right, now the herbs will go in. Now with the parsley, you do want to de-stem it. Um, a little bit of stem is okay if it's a real tender piece of stem, but the big bulky pieces you do want to get rid of. And when I say get rid of, I don't mean throw away or even compost because these things have tremendous flavor and are one of the key ingredients in making a really good stock. So I always save those, put them in my little stock bag in the freezer until I'm ready to make some stock. So I've got all my goodies in here. All the leaves can go in. I've done the same thing with the basil. The basil stems aren't really good for much else. Um, so I composted those. Add some sea salt. I'll take all of the uh, leaves off of my little thyme stems. Now my thyme was starting to flower already and that's okay for me. I put the flowers in too. They also make a really nice garnish if I wanna save them. Maybe that's what I'll do. I'll save a little beautiful flower and we'll use it as a garnish on our crostini at the end. All right, some pepper. Now I'm saving the olive oil to the very end. I'm actually gonna pulse it a little bit before I put that liquid in. The uh, lemon on the other hand, I'll add now. Um, before you cut it, if you zest it, it'll make your life a lot easier than if you forget to zest it and then squeeze your lemon and then try to get some of that good zest off of the skin once it's already been cut and deflated. So try to remember to zest first. If you are prepping ahead of time, you can always zest into a bowl and then squeeze the lemon juice on top of the zest and that'll help keep it from getting too dried out. And you can go a little crazy with the lemon if you want. Lots of times I make this really lemony, like if I'm gonna put it on a fish, I'll go very lemony on this dish. I think it works really nicely with the artichoke hearts. Um, today we're gonna put it on just some toasted bread as an appetizer, so I won't put too much lemon in it at first. We'll start with it being uh, one lemon and then we'll taste it and see what we think from there. So there's half and the other half.
All right. So, like I said, before I do any olive oil, I'm gonna go ahead and pulse this a few times. The reason for pulsing and not just turning it on and letting it run is every time you pulse it, it draws ingredients in um, from the top as well. So you get a much better even mix um, of processing. Plus we really wanna make sure that we stop before it gets really um, pureed. Um, we want a little bit of that texture in it. All right, we're looking pretty good here. Scrape down the sides. What I'm really looking for at this point is to see if the actual artichoke hearts have been chopped um, because you don't want any big pieces of those leaves. They can be a little weird from a texture perspective. It's looking really good. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of the olive oil. Now at this point, you get to use your own judgment in how runny you want it to be. If I were gonna go for a salad dressing, um, I would use a lot of olive oil at this point and let it be runny. Um, I'm gonna want it to stand up on a piece of bread, so I'm gonna use a little less than I would otherwise. So I'm gonna start with what I consider to be a shot or two of olive oil, very technical terms there. And I'm gonna pulse it again and kinda of see what the consistency looks like. And it looks like you could use just a little bit more. I want it to be shiny, but not runny. So that looks like it'll be a good one. Now, if you use canned artichoke hearts, keep in mind that there's probably a lot of salt in the liquid that they were canned in. So you'll end up putting less salt in your finished product. Whereas if you use frozen or fresh, you'll probably use more salt than that. All right, this is looking great. This is the consistency that I want so that it will stand up on a piece of bread. Um, and of course now I have to taste it. T check for salt, definitely check for a little more um, acid, see if we need that. Um, pepper, you could certainly go spicy with this with a little cayenne at this point. Um, so let me get a little taste. Mm -hmm. Perfect amount of lemon for what I want to do. Little pinch more salt and I'm good to go. So I'll just get this nice and mixed up. Um, at this point, I would take out anything that I want to freeze and go ahead and put that aside. One thing I would recommend is get yourself a cheap little ice cube tray and designate it to be your savory tray. And it's great for freezing things. So that way I can freeze my pesto in little ice cube blocks. Once it's frozen, then I can pop them out and put them into um, a sealable plastic bag. Um, when I'm ready to use it, I can just pull one little block at a time out, however many I need, um, but not have to defrost a whole bag of it. And that little ice cube tray works well for a stock. When you make your own stock, you can make stock ice cubes for exactly the same reason. You don't have to defrost that whole big bag of stock in order to just get a little bit for something that you're making. And um, You've got it for multiple uses. Um, for this particular pesto, I'm gonna go ahead and add my cheese now. And you can play around with different kinds of cheese as well. Parmesan Reggiano is a good standby. It's got a little bit of lovely salt to it. Um, it's got that aged cheese flavor and it's pretty standard for a regular pesto. Um, you could certainly use all sorts of different cheeses and just sort of change your angle a little bit of, of, of what your flavor profiles are going to be simply by changing the cheese around. That's the nice thing about freezing it without the cheese is that it gives you the opportunity to play around with it each time you use it. All right, I'm going to give it one more pulse just to get it nice and mixed up. Beautiful. And we're good to go. So I will go ahead and plate this up and um, have a nice little appetizer. I think it's a really nice thing to use edible flowers anytime you can. It just really takes your presentation to a higher level.